Hi, I'm Martha, and I am a quilter who has fallen in love with making baskets. And I have a project here today that you might be interested in. It's a very good beginner project, these little trinket trays. They're easy. They don't take a lot of time. They don't take a lot of resources. And uh, I think you would enjoy them. So I'm going to share that with you. What we need is clothesline rope. And I get this at Walmart. It's 100 feet. It takes 22 feet to do one basket. So that means you'd get four of them out of one skein of rope. And this is, uh, the working load limit is 90 pounds. So it's a good, sturdy rope. And so we're going to work with this. Now we need 22 feet, but we're not going to wrap all 22 feet. So what we need to do is to measure 13 feet, which would be the length of two tape measures. Each tape measure is 60 inches or five feet. Two tape measures is 10 feet and another 36 inches. And we would have our 13 feet. At that point, what you want to do is put a small pin in there to mark the spot. This is just telling you that when you go to wrap it, you can stop when you get there because the last part of it is white, it's not wrapped. So we're going to wind this back up again. And then the next thing I want to show you is the fabric. You'll need one fat quarter, I prefer actually doing a couple at a time. So I have a piece of fabric right here, a batik fabric, and it is, I have a half a yard, and actually I think it'll be enough for three of them. We'll see. But anyway, I'm going to start cutting this on the bias. If you have, if you can, it's good to cut this on the bias in one inch strips, but I have made baskets many times actually, when I have cut on the straight of grain. That happens if you are going to use a jelly roll or perhaps you have borders left over from a quilting project and you wanna use those scraps. Uh, so you can, you can use straight of grain. What you have to do is you have to lay it on your rope at a 45 degree angle. And it's not quite as nice, but once you get it zigzagged and whatever, you really can't tell the difference. Okay, so we're going to cut enough of these to cover that. Now, all of these are going to have little points. So you're going to want to cut off those points and just make an, a, a blunt end. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll be back with you when I'm ready for the next part, okay? I'm ready to start wrapping. First thing I want to do is to cut off this end and then I'm going to pull out this synthetic core. This is cotton roping but it has a synthetic core and I'm gonna pull it out, cut it off, toss it away, and then scoot this back up. Now, the reason for that is because I want this, this end part to be limp so that when it comes time to roll it, it's more easily manipulated. And then I'm going to put some glue on the end. I use tacky glue, put some glue on the end and get started with my first strip. I'm gonna lay it on like this, and I'm going to extend it a little beyond the rope because I don't want to see any white parts when I go to. Now, as I come to the end, I'm going to put a little dab of glue right there and then put on my next strip. Now, even though I believe this is batik, there is a difference between a, the back side and the, the right side, so I am going to try to pay attention to that, make sure I get the right side, and then continue wrapping. This takes some time. Uh, you can talk to a friend on the phone, watch TV, listen to an audio book, uh, whatever. I enjoy doing it when I travel. 
So uh, I will go ahead and wrap it up to that point where I had the pin and then I'll be back with you. I've wrapped the rope and now I'm ready to start sewing. I have set my machine on zigzag and I have threaded it. I prefer to use a walking foot. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's helpful. And here we go. Now, this is the, the first part is tricky because I'm going to try to twist it into a coil. And of course it's uh, stubborn. So we'll work with it a bit and get it to make a nice tight coil. <laughs> it wants to keep jumping out. After a while, you can do it on a flat surface and roll it up like this until you get about an inch in diameter. All right, and then we're going to start sewing right across that coil. You can see it's still pretty loose. We're going to do the opposite direction. And then two more times to make like a pie shape. Divide it into six segments, in other words. This will keep you from having gaps in the center part of the basket. I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be using this, a figure nine. This is how I'm going to start sewing. So to begin with, I'm gonna back it up like this and then very carefully start zigzagging around the coil and now I am back to this part and then I will just keep going now you'll notice that my right hand is guiding the rope and my left hand is turning the wheel. We're going to continue like this until we have a diameter of three and a half inches. Let's see if I have three and a half inches here. Yes, perfect. At this point, I'm going to take a pin and make a reference point. This will tell me when I have made a complete rotation. And then at this reference point, we're going to tilt this up to a 45 degree angle and continue sewing. I still turn the wheel with my left hand and guide the rope with my right hand. I'm going to continue like this all the way until I get to the end where I wrapped it. In other words, to where I put that little pin. I'm coming up to the end of my wrapped area. Now we're going to so with the, actually it's not white thread, it's more of a linen. And we're going to add this white cording until we have four rounds. I don't actually need this reference point anymore because I have, this makes the reference point, which is very easy to see. I've done four rows, almost. 
I'm going to stop just before I get to this reference point so that I have room to manipulate wrapping the ribbon. I'm ready to start wrapping ribbon around the last row, the fifth row. I debated about the green or the blue, but I think I'm going to go with green. So we need four feet of ribbon. And we're going to start putting it here. We want to, don't start wrapping it here, but up here to the reference point. And we're going to put a dab of glue on the rope and then bring this down and take this and cross it over and bring it up. And then we'll put a little pin right there and so to hold it in place while we wrap. And then we're going to start wrapping the ribbon. Try to make it nice and even. I have learned so much from other people, from other YouTubers. I have a Facebook group that I belong to and the Lord gives me all kinds of ideas, so I'm just very grateful. I owe it a debt of gratitude to all these, because I have learned so much from the other people, and so I'm happy to try to share some of this experience and knowledge with others. I'm getting to the end of my four feet of ribbon, so I know it's about time to stop. I'm going to put a clip right here, and then I'll start sewing. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. I can take this pin out. It should be dry by now. Clip off this tail and put it back on the sewing machine. You can use quarter inch ribbon. If you do, you'll end up with more of the color showing and less of the white underneath. I prefer the eight inch wide ribbon, but it's up to you. I'm going to stop just a little bit before the end. Now, I'll put my finger right here, let go of this clasp, and unwind some of this ribbon. Let's put a little bit of glue on the rope again, and put this up here. Fasten it again with a pin or the clip, whichever you prefer. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. It's an nuisance to try to work with it when it's not completely dry. I'll snip this off here and then I'll pull out the inner core. Let's try it. We're going to put this back up on the sewing machine and start, let me take this pin out. Okay, start zigzagging. Now, I'm going to flip this over like this, squeeze it in there, and then I'm going to zigzag along the left side, back stitch, and zigzag along the right side. There you have it. How do you like that? Ooh, some threads I need to clip. Wow, that's cool. Thank you, Lord. 
So there you have it. They turned out great. And don't limit yourself to just these dimensions. There are variations. Uh, get creative. This one is a little deeper, and it's because I sewed it at a 60 degree angle rather than a 45 degree angle, so it just makes a little deeper bowl, uh, which is fine. And then also I've made them larger, just takes more rope, more fabric, a little more white space at the top, a different kind of closure, but there are all kinds of possibilities. So go ahead and try it out, and I think you'll enjoy it. I think you might even get hooked. Now, in the description box, I'll put a link to my Etsy store where I sell all kinds of baskets. So check it out, and I'll talk to you again another day.